listen, I can tell you about pain. And I can tell you about change. Gave out of her poverty because she put in based upon what she had to live out of. Let's say it again. And Jesus looked up after he preached this message and he saw it was offering time and the rich were pulling that gives of the temple treasure. He looked up and saw somebody else getting the line. This old woman got in while the rich got in and she came up and put her two very small copper coins in. And the Lord said, tell him the truth. He said, look at that poor one. Simply meaning it got Jesus' attention. Who is putting in more than all the others. And all these that gave their gifts out of their will. But this woman gave out of her poverty. And put in all she had to live on. In Jesus' name. When you wait till you see, just slap the weight off your neighbor. Tell them the weight of generosity. The weight of generosity. You may be seated. In the presence of God. The way of generosity. Say it with me. The way of generosity. The way of generosity. The way of generosity. The way of generosity. Now, the text opens with a foundational principle. Uh, that all of us must be aware of. It opens with a foundation principle that many times in this portion of literature is overlooked. Jesus has just got to preaching a specialty service. And his reason for preaching the service was to promote provision for the church's treasury. Saints of God, listen to me. The greatest parts of the church that the church must brag about is not the amount of people that comes in. When you address a great church, you address a great church by the state of its treasure. The Bible declares that when he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, the Bible says when they came out, the proof that God was had brought them out of what they were in was the simple fact that he let them be released with all the wealth of Egypt. Pharaoh did not chase them because they left. He chased them because they had all the money. Y'all missing it. The testimony that the Lord Jesus saves us is he uses this vehicle of the treasury. Now in the temple, if you look over on the sides, they had built-in boxes. They called them trumpets in the, test of, in the word of God. Trumpets were just not trumpets that you play musically, but they were boxes in the walls. And they had little inscriptions and tabs on every one of those boxes. So that you knew that when every time the Lord increased you, you had to bring a portion of that to tell him thank you. Amen. And, and, and when, watch this, and when the saints as a collective whole saw people going over to the treasury box, they shouted. Because it simply means that somewhere in their life, God had won them the victory. Malachi 3 and 10, make that notation, it's there on your screen. Read it with me. Bring the whole, stop there, don't go no further. Whole. Everybody say whole. Whole. And see, this is the trick of the enemy because what the enemy tries to do to you is to get you to not be totally generous to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I ask you a question? How much does air cost? Hallelujah. How much does it cost to keep your heart beating? Right? God does these things for us every day, Mama Lester. And what I have learned is saints are cheating God, but making sure everybody else in their life is not cheating. Scoot up to the table of God and let me help you. He asked us to bring the whole time because he's the only one that can make you whole. Ain't nobody saying amen to this. Young people, wake up and listen to this because you ain't going to do nothing but be a failure in life if you miss principles that will help your life to be a better steward and a better person to the people that God is going to let you impact in life. Never cheat God. Okay, and you don't like it, right? Because it's in an area of your life that you want full control and autonomy. But he says, bring the whole tithe into where? The storehouse. Why? that there may be food in my house. Test me on this, the Lord says. In other words, he's saying this. If your priorities of generosity are right, and you give to God, you'll take less medicine. Well, I'm I'm say amen. Amen. 
if your priorities are right, your, your agony and things breaking down on you and things going wrong to you. Now see, I find it quite difficult when I was talking to one of my buddies, he was talking about he had to spend $2,000 to get his vehicle fixed. Then out of all of a sudden, while I was studying this literature, I asked him this critical thought, how much have you ever given one time in an offering at church? He said, man, I, I don't know, Pastor, why you asked me that? I said, this one just hypothetically want to know because I'm researching just to see how people think. He says, I probably never have given over $70 at one time. I said, so, so, so $2,000 into a vehicle. Y'all see, see this property? That's going to break down. You're going to trade away anyway. But $70 when it comes to the things of God. And the Lord is saying this. Generosity is always a clear picture of where your heart is. Oh my God. So Malachi says this and teaches us that to bring the whole, whole tithe. Everybody say whole tithe. Whole tithe. It simply is, watch this, what is called, write this down, a winner's testimony. Winner's testimony. Amen. How many winners do I have in the house by show of hands? Show of hands. I don't know if you're a winner. Watch this. Because I don't know how you define winners. <laughs> uh, but to define winner is to define how you are generous to the things of God. Meaning that every time you bring the whole time to the Lord, you have acknowledged that where you would have had lack, where you would have had shortage, and where you would have had insufficiency. The Lord God has helped you to win. Is that anybody's testimony in here that the Lord helped you win? <laughs> uh, anybody ever had debt counsel for you? The Lord helped you win. When? Have you ever had bills and didn't have the job? My brother testified one time, says, uh, when I retired and, and then dad uh, was laid off for a moment of time now. She says, we missed out a meal. Uh, some kind of way, all the bills were paid. Y'all, 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 I'm waiting on y'all to ask, are there really any winners in the house? Winning people are grateful people. That's why when people win things, they haul off crying, jump in the floor, jump on top of each other. Because some kind of way the Lord helped them win. And if the Lord helped you win, saints of God, it is critical that you understand that it is not that you owe God, but simple fact that he helped you make full payments on folks you owe. I ain't got nobody help me here. And because he helped me, Sister Emily, then I'm grateful for his love and his compassion. Is that simple? Do I have any witness that will acknowledge that the Lord has helped me? <laughs> right, come on, say it to yourself. The Lord, the Lord has helped me. Won't he help you when nobody else will help you? Won't he dry your tears when everybody else will leave you? Isn't he worthy of your praise? Can anybody testify that the Lord will restore what you lost? Anybody testify that he'll drip the slack out of your life? Will anybody testify that God has a way of holding it together till you get it together? Yeah. Praise the Lamb of God. Anybody know he'll make a way out of no way? <laughs> Lean over and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's my winning testimony. And that is, if it had not uh, my God, then for the Lord on my side, I could not have won the victory. Jesus' messages were so challenging to the poor. To give an abundance because, watch this, they have been favored with such. Scoot up close, saints. God does not always give the lot that he's given to you to everybody. Some of you will beat with many stripes. St. Luke 12 says this. God's going to beat many of us with many stripes because he gave you more opportunity. He gave you more talent. He, he let you be born without cleft lips and, and without Down syndrome. And gave you the clarity of your mind. See, 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 you don't know when you bring your tithe, you bring your gifts to the Lord, is that you will some recognize some stuff in your life. Well, every child I had, I would be standing on the cusp of worrying whether or not how this thing was going to turn out, you know. I don't know if I could handle a kid coming out and, and have autism, oh, man, where they don't sleep and they up all times. I don't know if my nerves body could have handled, y'all don't know when to say amen. I don't know if I could handle where, where, where kids have to come out and have uh, uh, colostomy bags because their kidneys, um, I don't know if I could see my babies in that state, but every now and then I tell you, I have to thank God. <laughs> ah, my God. I made it what God done for you. I have to thank him myself. 
and give him sacrificial praise, give him a sacrificial gift, because I'm grateful of what God has done for me. Can I get about 10 people jump up on your feet and say, I'm one of the ones. I'm just not going to thank him for the healing. <laughs> But I'm going to come back and tell them, Lord, let me holler at your prayer. Yes. I got to thank you because you've been mighty good to me. Uh -huh. My God, you ought to have five somebody on your way to your seat and say, he's talking about me. Yeah. So the rich, the rich have to be encouraged. You have to be encouraged. Why? You see, like the more people make, the more they have, the more liberal they are. But I found out sometimes the more people are blessed, the stingier they get. That's a hood term. Come on, let me talk to you. Have y'all seen that? My God. When you was my God had five, ten dollars, that's all you was. Can you need your whole sum? What you got? Only got ten. That's all you got? Yeah, that's all I got. Do you need it? Yeah, I need that ten dollars. Oh, but now you got an extra hundred. Y'all ain't the same man. My God, if I borrowed a dollar out of it, you'd be mad. What you need money for? What you call me for? Now you're mad because the Lord has, y'all ain't going to say amen. The Lord has blessed you. So Paul teaches Timothy how to preach to the tabernacle of God. Listen to me closely. He says this in 1 Timothy, praise the Lord, chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. Write that down. It's there on your screen. Read it with me. Instruct those who are rich in this present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth, but put their hope in what church? Are y'all reading? Put it in what? Can you read? What does it say? Talk to me. Are you asleep? Get up. <laughs> Praise God. No, uh huh. Are you reading? Where are you minded? Uh huh. Praise the Lord. But they put their hope where? In where? Uh huh. Stay with me. Put it in where? All right. Who does what? Richly what? All things. Why? For us to do what? Enjoy. Enjoy. 18 says, instructing them to do good and to be rich, not in money, but in what? Good works. That's a story that, uh, uh, about uh, this little boy. A uh, little boy was a poor little boy, went up to the mailman one day. He says to the mailman, you got anything in there that I can read? It messed the mailman up because the little boy uh, didn't ask him for toys, didn't ask him for money uh, to go get a pickle or gum. He asked the mailman if he had anything that he could read. So what the mailman began to do, he was somebody in the community, he got on his Facebook page and let somebody know that there's a little boy who came up to him who didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for toys. He simply wanted books that he could read. So what he did, watch this, he used his clout and power. So people began to donate. My father, matter of fact, his wife set up a GoFundMe account. Y'all ain't gonna say amen. And all of a sudden, this boy had more books at his house that he had toys and anything else and he was saying he was so grateful because man used his wealth his position and his power to enrich his life scoot up close can i ask you something how do you use your power how do you use your resources to be generous to give to somebody who is just trying to get a hand up y'all ain't gonna say amen to this but he says be rich in doing what good works to be generous and ready to share. The Salvation Army said in 1950, they coined a phrase that's still used today. It simply says this, sharing is caring. <laughs> sharing is caring. My brothers and sisters, do you ever get tired of people who take all the time? Scoot them close. I'm coming to get you here in a moment. Uh, get tired of people who take all the time. They, they use up all the resources, but never give in. Always, always. Did I say always? always. Got their hand out, but never give anyone else a hand up. Does it make anybody mad that you go out of your way to show people that you care? And the same people you help won't turn around and help no one else. It's a sickness that is bothered both with greed and I call ghettoology. Well, people will sell crap and dope to their own children yes, uh, to on. gain an extra dollar to spend on nothing. My, my, my. But I want to survey the room to see if there anybody in here, my God, for the yes, simple my, fact my, that my, God my. knows 
that God has allowed people to be gracious to you. Do I have anybody testify to know that's been some people that's been gracious to you? <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna say that. Everybody ain't a crook, but there are some people in your life you should call every now and then and say, you know what? I'm gonna tell God I thank God for you. And it's sometimes people, they have not given you money, but they gave you a word of encouragement when you were down. Come on, talk to me. It was somebody that showed up, my God, for you when you were down, when you were struggling. They just called and just simply say, I just want to see how you're doing. And you say, you know what? You all right with me. And my God, saints of God, we ought to appreciate God, my brothers and sisters, because of the graciousness that comes to us through someone else's generosity. Anybody thank God for your job. Thank God for support. Thank God for those who assist you. Thank God that he let your life be manageable. Thank God that he loved you enough that sometimes people will forsake their own needs to help you with yours. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. So Jesus was preaching like this in the service and he convinced the congregation of the value of money is not in what you spend on things, but what you spend on things that breathe. Thank you, Lord. So at the end of this message, Jesus gets through thundering away at those who have gifts and everyone who has gifts. And he sits down. Yes. And when Jesus sits down, my brothers and sisters, he begins to observe some things. He begins to observe because now it's time to give missions. That's what it was called in that day. In, in our day, it's called a missions offering. Missions offering catered to three kinds of people. Write this down so that you know. It caters to, read them with me, the foreigners, the fatherless, and the forgotten. That's why the money was raised in this particular service. Exodus 22 and 21 says, Do not mistreat or oppress a foreigner, for you were once foreigners in Egypt. In other words, what the Bible is simply saying, we give because we can remember what we used to look like. Y'all ain't going to say amen to that. Have you ever been somewhere and saw somebody going through something that you remember the day you was going through? I mean, it's got to be some sisters in here that's been somewhere in the grocery store, saw some sister dragging her baby. And you remember when you were struggling and down and God touched your heart. You just said, baby, here, just, just take this $20. You know what you did? You were generous because you could remember where you used to be. See, when you stop giving it, it's because you start forgetting. Y'all ain't gonna say amen to this. But, but every now and then, you ought to look at a homeless person and say, you know what? <laughs> Man, I'm gonna bless you because I remember what it feels like to be in lack. I remember what it feels like to be in insult. I wish I had somebody to help me here. I lean over and push your neighbor and say, do you remember where you used to be, honey? That's the, that's the testimony of giving to the foreigner, but also to the fatherless. James 1 and 27 says, good religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. In other words, we give to those who are surviving, scoot up close, what God lets you escape. Amen. Anybody here had a mother? You had a mother coming up, wave at you. You had a mother coming up. Hey, I don't care if she did get on your nerve. It's your mama. Hey, Amen. There's some people that never met their mother, died on the table. I just got through ministering someone. Mother took ill when they had the baby. And now they're trying to see if she's going to survive and live. Meaning that the baby's going to grow up if the mother dies and never get a chance to meet her mother. But you ought to thank God for your mama. Thank God. If you had a daddy, you ought to thank God for him. And y'all want to say amen to that because there are many that are fatherless and there are many widows in a time of affliction that God will touch your heart to go see. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit becomes your conscience when you think, I saw your grass up while I was passing by and the Lord just touched my heart to stop by. Who cuts your grass for it to, well, you know that sorry boy, man, said he was going to cut it. Amen. He ain't been through here. We, you know what, my mother, if it's all right, I'm going to take care of this for you. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm not going to cut it, but I'm going to send somebody over here to cut your grass. Yeah. Because, watch this, when I was riding, I was talking to the Lord, and he led me yeah. to help you. Yeah. There was a man that left the airport just a few days ago, I won't say his name, to protect his...
to, to, to protect who he is, uh, but we was having a wonderful conversation. He left the airport, he says, uh, he was familiar with the town in which the airport in which he come in, he had his rental car, he was driving. Watch this, watch how powerful this is. This man is driving where he's going. But he says, God told him, turn on 83rd. Turn on 83rd. He said, what is 83rd? 83rd is not in the way of what the navigation is saying. Why should I turn on 83rd? He says, well, he just listens what he said to the voice. So he turned on 83rd. He says, he's driving down 83rd. He said, I don't even know anybody over here. What's going on on 83rd? He says, he says, and the Lord then said, pink house. He said, what's the chances? This, I must be going crazy that somebody got a pink house in the 21st century. He said, he gets down to the stop sign and there's a pink house at the stop sign. He said, so first I was nervous because I'm saying, I don't know what in the world I'm walking in on. So he goes up to the door and knocks on the door. Watch this. And he, he, the lady comes to the door and the lady says, yes, sir, how can I help you? She's crying. She says, I don't have anything to give. And she, he says, ma'am, I didn't come to take anything. Which Because watch this. He don't know why he's knocking on the door. So what the man does, Dickie Fred, he says, uh, ma'am, I don't know. Uh, ma'am, what is that sign? Watch this. In the cry of the baby behind her. Wow. God said, the milk in your trunk, give it to them. Same thing. See, you got too many selfish saints in the world that won't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said he went and got all four gallons of milk that he was getting ready to take to his business and gave it to the mother and said, give that. He says this, give that to the baby. And every week, I'm going to send you free milk until that baby becomes born. God, he says, and sometimes you wasn't evil, you were trying to act good. And, and, and that's when you try to do good, you try to act good. Watch the third stage, when you were unsaved. And then he says this, and more so, not only when you were unsaved, but God has been good to you since you've been saved. So whether you good, whether you evil, whether you unsaved, or whether you saved, Everybody can testify. He done done right by me. Say amen to this. I just found out that God has been gracious to you all of your life. And every time you get a chance, you ought to thank him. Because he's been so gracious. Lord, we praise you for your goodness. Hallelujah. We praise you that when we were no good, you ought to praise him for his grace. Because you can remember when you were unworthy. You ought to praise him when you were poor. Because he still gifted you with just enough. I dare somebody to tell the Lord, I appreciate you. That in whatever state I found myself in, he had been mighty good to me. I'm closing when I tell you these three things. Three things about generosity that you need to know before you leave. Now when the woman was in the service, the first thing that she had to have when she saw how to be generous, she first of all, write this down, generosity is an attitude. I said generosity is an attitude. Notice now that when the rich got up and got in line, watch this, she got in line too. Y'all missed it. I said, when the rich got up to give first, she got in the line too. Now, wait, wait a minute, woman. How are you in the line and all you got is two copper coins? Because she was trying to tell somebody, rich ain't what in your pocket, it's what's in your hand. Y'all better come and give me a heat. Lean over and slap your neighbor and say, you ain't to praise them when you get it. Come on, tell them. You waiting on the train to come in to praise them. But tell them, don't wait till the battle is over. You got to go ahead and praise them like you already got it. Will anybody praise them like you already got the new car? Will anybody praise them like you're living in the new house? Will anybody praise them like you already got the new man? Y'all ain't going to help me. There's somebody to whip up on your feet and give God a praise because you got an attitude of praise. And that 
what is the issue as I'm closing? Self-perception is everything. If you think you poor, you poor. If you think you have crazy, you crazy. But can I tell you, I don't care if I lose everything tomorrow. I don't care if I lose my car and my house. Can I testify to you so you know, don't call me talking about claiming you lost your house and your car. No, 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 because I'm going to answer the phone and tell you God is good. <laughs> Not sometimes, but the Lord is good all of the time. Well, why are you praising him, Clay? He woke me up before. <laughs> He's still praising him. He started me on my way. Yeah. Do I have anybody here that's not so carnal to thank him for things? But you can thank him for peace of mind. Your wealth is in your mouth. Joel 3 and 10 says it like this. Read it with me. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the Lord Say I'm rich. Lean over and testify to your neighbor. Say, let me make my confession to you. Come on, get on their nerve. I don't care they looking ugly and stuck up. Touch them. Say, neighbor, I gotta talk to you. Tell them I, I may not have what I need, but I'm richer than any Donald Trump. I may be weak in my body, but because I got the Lord, I got all the strength that I need. Can I get somebody to wave your hand and say, I'm not what I need? But tell your neighbor, lean over and grab him by the head and say, neighbor, tell him I see you in the future. And you look a whole lot better than you do right now. Somebody scream a heart. It's in my mouth that I praise you, but not what's in my mouth. She has an attitude of generosity. See, but she got in the light. Can you see her? Somebody doing this. Oh, Lord. Mother Feathers is getting in the wrong line. Y'all know how church folks in. Oh, Lord, somebody go get her. She done fooled around and got in the line of the rich. And I can see ushers going over to a friend saying, Mama, Mama, Mama. Mama, no, 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 no. Mama, you in the wrong line. And I see mother looking back saying, Honey, I ain't in the wrong line. He called for the rich. You see, you having too many breakdowns and mental parties because you count what's in your account. But I heard Paul declare in Philippians chapter 4 that God will supply all. Right. Help me, prophet. I said, all of your needs, not according to your bank account, no. but according to his riches and his glory. Not only is generosity an attitude, but number two, write this down generosity is an acknowledgement. Notice what the text says. That even though she didn't have much, she knew God did. She gave all she had because she acknowledged the God who gave all he had. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Y'all not gonna help me here. Have you acknowledged that in your life? That when you give to God, it's cause he already has gave to you. She, my brothers and sisters, understood when she was in the line. I can see her talking to the rich man. What you give? Five thousand. Uh-huh. Turn around behind her. Baby, what you give? Ten thousand. And the boys looked at each other and looked at mama and said, Mama, what you give? She reached down in that bucket, pulled them two quarters out. She said, I'm giving 50 cents. Y'all on me. I'm waiting on y'all. And I can hear the conversation because the guys looked at each other and said, that ain't nothing. She says, it may not be nothing to you. But when I'm giving God all I have, y'all better come get me. Leave over church and neighbor and say, it may not be bigger than yours, but tell them it's better than yours. Why was it better 
what the well, the widow woman gave out of her need. And the rich only gave out of their lease. I prophesy in this house, raise your hand and receive it. That if those of you who struggle today, I feel God. Because some of you have been struggling and your self-perception has been based upon what you not have had. You've gone around and fell down because of what you don't have. You look in the refrigerator, you got to wait on the first of the month to go get groceries on stuff that you want. Come on, leave your hand up. I'm about to make a declaration in the house. And you look up to God sometime and you feel down. You want to complain because you struggle. You take it out on other people because you feel like they should help you better than where you are. But I prophesy in this house this morning as the man of God. I tell you, I don't care if it's a dime. Get something in your hand and just run it down here to the altar and throw it on there. I am breaking the back of poverty right now. I am believing that whatever you give to the Lord, based upon wherever God got you, your day of struggle is over. Man. Now you think I'm making a declaration It ain't got nothing to do with the money It has everything to do With trusting the Lord And when you trust God My God I'm trying not to lose my mind in here But I hear number 624 Come on tell him thank you When you put it on there Lord thank you Thank you Thank you for it I said thank you for it Thank you for it Look what God is doing. I said, thank you for it. I said, thank him in advance. You better help me. I said, thank you. Thank him on your way back to your seat. That all of your needs have been met. Come on, thank him for the new kidney. Thank him for the new heart. Come on, tell him thank you. You're not giving it based on the amount. You're giving it based on your ability to trust in God. Mike, the only way you're not going to struggle, you got to learn how to give. Yes, so, I mean, what do you mean? I don't have much to give. He said, no, it's the principle of it. That you give because of who I am. When I was growing up, I seen a whole lot of struggle, I'm telling you. I seen a whole lot. And I didn't even get it. And, 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 and going through life, I didn't get it. So one day, I was talking to my mother. Two times I was talking to my mother and my dad. And brothers and sisters, this is what happened. I was talking to them and uh, I was telling mama I was building a house. I had I got a house and mama I want to get into. And, and she says, Well, well, where where's the house? I said, Well, it's in Little Rock. She said, Oh, okay. Uh, well, what kind of house is it? And and and, and I was telling her, uh, you know, I ain't gonna have y'all all in my business. You know, it's a house I'm gonna get and and, uh, and the first thing she said, Well, how much you gonna pay for the house? I'm gonna get the house. I told her, you know, somewhere up there, you know, and I did my mother did everything like this. My mother said, oh, Lord, that's too much. You sure y'all can't find a house cheaper than that? And see, it wasn't until that moment that I had not sat out with myself and saw the favor of God on my life. Amen. And when my dad came to the greater works the first time, and, 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 and y'all should have saw how it used to be. But that's when the walls was open. And he came. He was standing right there. And he says, well, he says this. What room is this? I said, no, Dad, it's not a room at all. It's the front foyer. He, he went to equating foyers to his church where he was. And he says, this is a foyer? What's a foyer? That's the first thing. Oh, they brought up vestibule in the Baptist church. Y'all ain't going to say, man, that, that term was too fancy. I said, it's where I want to give the saints plenty of room to fellowship 
He said, well, what's going to go on these rooms? I said, them not rooms, Dad. That's the hallway. Mama. He said, your hallway is big? I said, yes, sir, it's going to be that big because I want saints to be able to sit and fellowship and talk uh, right in here and have time where they can gaze back and forth and not be, y'all know you go to some churches, they got that small cubicle, you got to pass people in the hall rubbing business. No, 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 I want you to get it. It wasn't until then that I had saw what giving done to my mind. It made me reach for better. It made me reach for something bigger. And it led me to believe the God that brought me up the elevator could keep me and escalate me higher than I was down here. I wish I had a witness out there. So the woman, I saw that generosity was an attitude. But number two, generosity is an acknowledgement. My God. But lastly, I want to tell you, generosity is, write this down, an agreement. Uh -huh. The text says she gave up the money, underlined, that she lived on. Now, I don't know about you. It's easy. I'm closing. Yes. When you give out of your more than enough. But it's real hard. I got some help here. When you're looking at the money. And you're saying, man, I got bills. And I need gas money to make it back to the house because I barely made it here. Y'all ain't say man. And that woman took her last money. In other words, saints of God, she recognized that if she would make an agreement to give to God and be generous, that God will resume all of her responsibilities. I don't know about you, but if I came on your road and told you, uh, give me all your bills. For what? <laughs> Just give me all your bills. All I want you to do is hand me all your bills. Or what you need them for. What, what you're trying to do. What you're trying to I ask you to hand me all your bills. Y'all miss it. Y'all don't know when to shout. The agreement is, if you would agree to trust me, I will agree to bless you. St. Luke 6 and 38 says it like this. And I'm getting out of here. Give and it shall be given. And then it said good measure. One translation said packed down. Y'all ever had something packed down? I never understood packed down. Until I seen a man take a dummy and put him in a box. And he took the side of that dummy and started winning it on the side. I said, what in the world are you doing? He said, well, when you start turning it on the side, he said, something on the inside of the box starts spinning on the way up. And when it gets to the highest point, then what's in the box will pop up out of the box. Can I tell you, saints of God, when you start giving to God, He starts turning. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that when you just gave on the altar, I saw God go in your life and start turning the heart of your supervisor. I see God turn the heart of new customers. I see God start to work favor for you. Will you do me a favor and reach and grab somebody by the hand and sing neighbor tell them God is turning things around for you right now and tell them neighbor if you would give him some praise because he's already made a way for you put measure press down shaken together Oh, <laughs> 